$700. That is the amount of the average car payment in 2022. And 10% of people that got a new car in 2022 have a car payment of over $1,000. What the f and even if you kept a car payment, but just cut that 700 and a half to $350, if you took the difference and set up auto investments for the next 30 years, that would grow to over $475,000. Listen, we can't control inflation or the car prices that are being marketed to us, but we can control what we buy and how long we actually hold those vehicles. And the budget dog message isn't to just never buy cars or enjoy any luxuries here. The message is just to use common sense and not put yourself in a hole financially just because you use justification to do something dumb. So I wanna make that very, very clear. Also, before we start, hit that big red button below to subscribe to my page so you can see more of my videos like this every single Monday. It will help out me to continue to put out weekly videos for you. Cars have had their own special place in America for a long time. The wide open roads, the wind in your hair, the feeling of freedom when you drive. Cars have been glamorized in movies, rap videos, and American culture for years. And hey, if you have a new car, you made it, right? And right now, that feeling of freedom comes with a pretty hefty price tag. The average monthly car payment crossed over $700 a month earlier this year, the highest on record, according to Moody's Analytics. People rely on cars to get to work, and three out of four Americans commute to work by car. Then there's school, drop-offs, adopter appointments, grocery shopping, and much more. And yet, for more and more Americans, owning a car is becoming unaffordable. Indeed, that high dollar figure doesn't even account for insurance or parking for those that have to pay it. Not to mention gas prices that crossed $5 a gallon recently and are still hovering near these record levels. There's also no end in sight in an era where interest rates are rising and the cost of borrowing will likely go up more. So what is causing these prices to spike? The primary reason cars have gotten so pricey can be tracked back to one thing, which is the computer chip shortage that started during the pandemic. When car sales dropped dramatically during the early parts of the lockdown, auto manufacturers slashed orders for the chips. Around that same time as schools and work went online, people bought additional laptops, iPads, TVs, video games, and all the other electronics for their house. So chip manufacturers shifted their production to serve these companies. And this was soon followed by other big shifts in the economy. And people started moving out of crowded cities into suburban locations. And suddenly, demand for cars skyrocketed. Auto manufacturers were caught flat-footed and unable to make enough cars because they didn't have enough microchips, which plays a big role in today's cars, controlling everything from the windows to the navigation screen to even passenger seat sensor. That also means the automakers have been making fewer compact cars and sedans, the more affordable vehicle. And hear this, the average cost of a new car now has topped $47,000. The result is that prices have climbed to astronomical levels. We're not going to see a sudden drop off in price anytime soon because there doesn't seem to be a resolution for the chip crisis. And used cars, forget about it. They're just as unaffordable. Those that have looked for used cars are also facing sticker shock. And used car prices have shot up even more dramatically than new car prices, up 16.1% from a year ago compared to 12.6% jump in new car prices. But people still love their cars. In a recent article, after a lot of shopping, Daniel Navarro from California found a used Lexus online. His car payments were 580 a month, which was over $200 more than what he was used to paying. And that was before adding his insurance bill and parking fees in downtown LA. In the article, Navarro said, I'm definitely gonna have to probably pick up a shift or two more this week, referring to his job as a server at a restaurant in Santa Monica, California. Driving cuts his hour long commute in half, but it's not the only reason he got a new car. He also went on to say, I like to ride in my car with friends and listen to music. I actually even have a carpool karaoke microphone. That's always fun. Navarro is like a lot of Americans. He loves his car, but he loves the experience and status it provides. Him. For as long as he can make the payment, not necessarily afford it, he's going to own one, he said. But we have to get smarter and see the bigger picture. At the same time, even with work from home, we still likely need some sort of car. So how can you get the best interest rate on an upcoming car? Maintaining good credit is important so you can qualify for the lowest interest rate possible. Some dealers may still offer 0% financing on new cars, but you'll typically need a credit score of 760 or higher to qualify. And also, usually that 0% financing is built into the price of the car. And if you need to check your credit score, you can get a free credit report at annualcreditreport.com. 
Gmail.com. I recommend to do this annually anyways, and I put the link in the show notes below. And also compare the loan rates among lenders and get pre-qualified before car shopping so you can check the rate you secured against the one offered by the dealer. Just make sure the car dealership does not have their lenders run a hard credit inquiry multiple times as that will look really bad on your credit report and also take two years to be removed. So with prices being so high, I've seen so many people go ahead and extend their loan. And let me tell you why that's a horrible idea. More than a third of shoppers who finance a new car in June chose a loan of 73 to 84 months or about six to seven years. But longer loans typically have higher interest rates. So you'll pay more over time, even though payments are more manageable. And with longer loans, there's always more risk of becoming upside down, meaning the car will be worth less than the loan balance. In other words, you could owe money if you have to sell the car before the debt is paid. Be very careful with simply extending the loan. Chances are you would take on too much car, then you're gonna either want or need a new car at the end of that period, just to take on the same loan again and again and again. It will constantly hold you back. A rule of thumb I like to use for cars is the 24-10 rule. What is this? 20% down payment on the car itself, a four year term at a max, so 48 months, not 73 to 84, and total transportation costs, not just the car loan, to be less than 10% of your monthly income. And as my guys, Brian and Bo over at the Money Guy Show say, they actually use 23 and eight for this rule, which I would highly recommend myself. Remember, again, the budget dog message isn't to just never buy cars or enjoy luxuries here. The message is to use common sense and to not put yourself in a hole financially because you use justification to do something dumb. So I hope this helps you in your car purchases in the future and allows you to live a much better, well-rounded life. As a reminder, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click on the subscribe button below. And lastly, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.